Hey everybody, this is Bodishan here. Today we're talking about acids and bases. So a couple vocabulary words to know. pH scale is the measure of how acidic or how basic a liquid is. A base is a substance that releases OH negative hydroxide ions in water when it dissolves. We also call a base alkaline. And then there's an acid and that's a substance that releases the H positive or hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. You can see that in our model here. An acid is gonna have the H positive and a base is gonna have the OH negative. It makes it really easy to tell. So an H positive is the same thing as the H3O positive, which we just call hydronium. You can see from our equation here, we have an acid plus the base and it's going to give us um, the acid hydronium plus the OH negative base. All right, if you're looking at this, we have um, the acidic solution. It's just showing you that we have more H positives than we do OH negatives in the aqueous solution. If it's neutral, they're gonna be equal. So we're gonna have equal parts of the H positive and OH negative together total. And then if it's basic or alkaline, you're gonna have more of that OH negative in there than you do of the H positive. So here's the pH scale. It does range from zero to 14. Seven is gonna be neutral. Anything below seven is acidic, so zero to 6.9. And anything above seven, which is the 7.1 to 14, is basic, or we call that alkaline. I have a, a, a lab video on this if you would like to see anything with like pH paper testing. Um, so I'll link that in the description below and you all can watch it. Um, but this, this is just the measure of concentration of H positive ions in a solution. So here's the pH scale and you can see some of the classic things that we relate with these different pH levels. Um, so one which would be extremely acidic is gonna be like stomach acid and you can see it's going to get um, more and more um, weak as it goes towards seven which is neutral and the example for, for neutral is gonna be water. So six, milk, that's gonna be a very weak acid. On the other side of seven, we have eggs, which is an eight. That is gonna be a very weak base. As we move farther and farther away from seven, it's gonna get stronger no matter which direction you go. So if we look over here at like 13 or 14, and you can see these are like highly concentrated alkalized, um, maybe like an oven cleaner or something like that. This is gonna be um, a 14, which is a very strong base. All right, litmus paper. That is one way that we can tell if something is an acid or a base. If you put blue litmus paper in a solution and it turns red, honestly, it looks pink, but we call it red, um, it's gonna be an acid. And if you put the red litmus paper that looks pink inside a solution and it turns blue, then it's a base. And you can remember B for blue, B for base, and that kind of helps you out. I also have a video where I tested lots of different substances with litmus paper, and I'll link that in the video description below as well. Okay, another one um, is our natural indicator, and that is cabbage juice indicator. Um, and you can make this yourself at home. This is a very safe one to handle because it is just made with cabbage juice. And you can see the range of colors that it will turn when you pour it into the substance, and then it coincides with the pH scale. I also have a video where I tested lots of substances with the cabbage juice, and I'll link that one in the description below as well. Okay, phenophthalein will turn pink in solutions that are basic. So if it's alkaline or basic, it will turn that pink. If it doesn't change color, it's either gonna be neutral or it's gonna be an acid. So this is what this one looks like right here. All right, here is acids and bases. We're gonna kinda like look at the description of both and kinda compare and contrast. So acids will release the hydrogen ion H plus in water. They're gonna taste really sour. They have a pH below seven, so zero to 6.9. They turn blue litmus paper red and they're gonna be kind of sticky to the touch. Their texture is kind of sticky. And they do turn um, pH paper pink, yellow, or red, depending on if it's a weak or strong acid. Uh, bases on the other hand, they are gonna release hydroxide ions, which is the OH negative in water. They're gonna be very bitter tasting, kind of think like a soap, you know, it's kind of gross, right? Um, pH is gonna be above seven, so 7.1 all the way to 14, and they are gonna be slippery when you fill them. And again, think about soap, it's very slippery. 
Um, and it turns phenophthalein pink. It turns red litmus paper blue. And it will turn pH paper anywhere from a, like a green to a dark blue shade, okay? Depending on its strength. And we also call it an alkaline. Um, so things that they both have in common are down here. They can both be corrosive if they're strong enough. And compounds, um, they release ions. So whether it's going to be positive or negative, they will release ions in a solution. So here's just a visual to get you guys um, to, to think about the concentration or the molarity and the strength of the pHs as well. So if we put a whole lot of acid in our solution, we can consider that um, a very concentrated or high molarity acid. And this would be an example of like a pH of one, okay? So a low number, um, and that's gonna be strong acid. If we just put in a little bit of acid, this is gonna be a very diluted acid, and that would be an example of like a pH six, so pretty close to seven, um, and it's gonna just be weak. If we put in a little bit of alkali or basic, um, then you're gonna have a diluted alkali or a very diluted base, and a good example would be pH of nine, again, it's not um, too far away from seven, and that is a weak alkali. If you put a whole lot of alkali or a whole lot of base inside your solution, that's gonna be very concentrated. A good example would be 14, 13, 14-ish, and it's gonna be very strong alkali. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at acids a little more carefully. So strong acids will fully dissociate in water 100% and weak acids will only partially dissociate. Remember that dissociation means that it's going to break apart from its molecule and go into ions. So cations that are positive and anions that are negative. And you can see this happening. So they're all pouring in there together and then they separate when they get in the water. We call that dissociation. So this is gonna be a strong acid because they've all separated out. Over here we have a weak acid because when they are um, dissolved in the water, you can see some of them stay together and some of them dissociate out into ions. So that is a weak acid. All right, so which one is a weak acid then? Pause your video and see if you can get this one right. Okay, are you ready? This one right here is gonna be the weak acid because we can see these are still uh, holding together as a molecule. There's only going to be one H positive that has broken down in, um, and dissociates. This is only partial dissociation. Why this one over here, they've all broken down. This is full dissociation. And there's a lot more H plus going on. Okay, so which one has more acidic pH? Well, you probably guessed it, right? If this one has dissociated more, this one is definitely gonna be the higher pH. And we can tell because this one contains more H positive and it's dissociated. Okay, there are only seven strong acids that you have to know and all of the rest, we can pretty much consider them weak acids. So pause this video, you can write these down if you need to. Here are the chemical formulas and the names are underneath it. And these are just ones to memorize. So pause this video. All right, let's go ahead. So let's talk about bases. So bases are pretty much the same as an acid in the sense of dissociation. So uh, strong bases fully dissociate in water 100% and weak bases only partially dissociate in water. So you can see again here, we have a strong base and it is fully dissociated. None of these are together in molecule form. They are all separated out into cations and anions. And then over here we have a weak base so these haven't dissociated at all. So this would be considered a very weak base. If it had partial dissociation and there were some that were dissociated while others stay together in their molecular form, then it would be a little bit stronger. So in the middle of these two. All right, so which solution is more basic? Go ahead and pause your video and try this one out. Okay, are you ready? This one right here is gonna be more basic. You can tell because this one has fully dissociated and this one has only partially dissociated. We only have like, you know, a couple little ions floating around Why this one has all of them. All right guys, here is an example test question. See if you can get this one correct. A student is given the following information about an unknown solution. It dissociates 100%, it feels slippery to the touch and it has a pH of 13.5. What is the possible classification of the unknown substance? Pause your video and see if you can get it right. All right, let's go ahead and check the answer. It's definitely gonna be a strong base. So because it dissociates 100%, that means it's strong. 
If it feels slippery, that means it's a base. And the pH of 13.5 is a very high number, and we know around the 13s and 14s, that's gonna be a very strong base. So this is definitely answer choice C. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Check out my videos for more help on science or chemistry, and I will see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.